Okay, folks, are you all ready? As the next chapter is about to begin. We will begin with page 254. Let us begin with this simulated question as an appetizer to this chapter. A 32-year-old botanist has been researching the endemic flora of a desert area in New Mexico for over six months. A week ago, he was admitted to a nearby clinic with the complaints of flu-like symptoms, malaise, fever, muscle and joint pain, and increasing pulmonary discomfort. On examination, there were red spotty rashes similar to measles on his knees and ankles. The chest x-ray reveals pleural effusion and shadows in both lungs in addition to multiple thin-walled cavities. Which of the following options is the most likely etiology for these findings? Here are your options. An infection by Mycobacterium morinum, an infection by Mycoplasma pneumoniae, blastomycosis, coccidioidomycosis, or histoplasmosis. Let us add some coloration schemes so that we can see better through the clutter. Let's now analyze the question and let us first apply some test strategies to see if we can eliminate a few of the options. Now, with your recollections of our top test taking strategies that we have covered before, which of these strategies, in your opinion, is more helpful in eliminating at least one of the options for us? You're correct. The landscape law. Yes, with the landscape law, we can eliminate histoplasmosis. So far, we have moved 5% closer to the correct answer. Now, let us look more closely at some of the key words of the question. I see a botanist. I see a desert area. I see... New Mexico, these remind me of cactus. I see also Marino, this reminds me of oceans. The two do not seem to go together quite well, therefore, we can eliminate Mycobacterium marino. So far, our chances for getting the correct answer is 33.3%. What about mycoplasma pneumoniae? Mycoplasma pneumo is the most common cause of walking or atypical pneumonia. But where do you get it? You usually see it among the college students, in the dorms, in the high schools. You need crowd effect. You need people that are gathered together to pass this bug around. In the middle of a lonely desert, we don't have a crowd effect. Since we don't have a crowd effect, we can also remove mycoplasma pneumoniae. And these two are our final alternatives. So, what can we do right now? What test strategy you can use? Students use three strategies. The most commonly used one is the third one. This is one, this is two, and this is the most commonly used one. Hey, I tell you folks, you did this strategy on your MCAT. You're going to do it again on your USMLE or complex exam. But the good news is that more likely you're going to be picking up the correct answer using this strategy because your subliminal knowledge 
is going to be helping you in picking up the correct answer. But which one is the correct answer? The correct answer is... Yes, coccidioidomycosis is the correct answer, and I'm sure had you picked up the correct answer, you should have felt very happy. Let's analyze quickly these options. Coccidioides emetis was the correct answer for this question. Actually, the question was testing you about the endemic domains of those bugs. Coccidioides emetis is a fungus. At Northwestern, we have coined the term cook for this bug, for Coccidioides emetis. Where does a cold can of Coke make more sense than anywhere else in the whole world? In the middle of a lonely and hot desert. That's where you like to see the Coke. That's where you see the Coccidioides emetis. So far, I have a mnemonic for you for Blastomyces, that broad based budding beast is blastomyces and we're going to cover the rest as we go on but just bring your attention to mycobacterium marinum you see it in the fresh and salt waters and also individuals working with the fish tanks and it usually gets into the body into the skin via abrasions on the skin and the symptoms are very similar to the symptoms of sporothrix because it causes skin granulomas and your top differential for diagnosis of mycobacterium marinum is sporothrix. Sporothrix, the classic patient is a gardener who is working with red roses and pricks his hand with the thorns of the rose and that's where you're going to get that lymphangitis and those granulomas. This time, abrasions of the skin and fish handlers are the ones who get this disease. Interestingly, this disease, you see it in the cool areas of the body. It has predilection for the cool areas. So mostly you're going to see it on the fingers or you're going to see it on the toes, uh, so on and so forth. People who walk in the oceans, you know, with scratches on their skins, they are more likely to acquire this condition. Coke is our mnemonic for coccidioides emetis. California, Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico. You may have an objection that this is not a Coke, this is an imitation of the Coke. Well, well, we can respond back to your objection by saying that's why we call this fungus coccidioides emetis. In that sense, it reminds you of coke imitation. So coccidioides is a coke imitation. That's why we call it coccidioides emetis. Well, if you're a visual learner, we have carpeted the surface of Sedona with Coke can so that you never forget where you have to see the Coke. For some of the distractors, at least one of the distractors that we ruled out earlier, and if love is that which makes you never forget, I have this mnemonic. Hi, Miss Ohio for histoplasmosis in Mississippi and Ohio River Valley. But if hatred is something that makes you never forget, don't worry, I have a mnemonic for you as well. For the same concept, histoplasmosis, HMO. Now the reason that I have bat in here is important because in the USA, Bats and bat droppings are the most important dissemination vectors for histoplasmosis. 
Of course, the endemic domain and the endemic areas would be Mississippi and Ohio River Valley area. So High Miss Ohio or HMO are mnemonics and bats, of course, mnemonics for learning histoplasma capsulata. The case continues. The patient receives an IV medication. As a follow-up, he is scheduled for renal function test. Which of the following medications has he received? Amphotericin B, Griseofulvin, Nystatin, Flucytosine, or Thiobendazole? I'll give you the correct answer, and then we're going to learn more about it. The correct answer is Amphotericin B. And the most important and most commonly tested side effect of Amphotericin B is renal toxicity. So you can look at Amphotericin B this way to remind you of the fact that it causes renal toxicity. Another mnemonic, you can call this bug Amphoterrible because it causes serious nephrotoxicity. Also, it causes hepato and neurotoxicity. But nephrotoxicity is the most important and most commonly tested side effect of Amphotericin B. Of course, when you use this systemically, so you use it for systemic infections, that's where it causes these important side effects.